Hello and welcome back to another Indie Sunday. Today, we're going to be playing Monster Prom. It is a... well, I don't really know too much about the game. I did look up how long it usually takes, because this is not like we often have a demo or anything of the likes. This is a full game, but I'm not sure yet how much of it I will play. We'll see. Uh, I, I looked up like it said like main story is one and a half hours or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what main story means. But I guess we'll just find out together. Voice interjections. Sure, go on. Uh, it is a game that you can somehow play in multiplayer mode. I'm not exactly sure what that means either. So we'll play single player. Uh, a short game, that seems perfect, around 30 minutes. So it's... <laughs> can, can you call that a roguelike? You do get through multiple runs, apparently, so I guess that fulfills the description. It's a, an unusual roguelike, but it should be one. Ah, uh, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Uh, I guess that's us. Sure. Uh, custom name. There you go. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remembered clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LaVey, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam the Lion Court, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Holly Geist, 22, maybe? A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberla, a mean, self made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear. It had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Then let's go. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, trademark, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect, re reflect your true selves. Let's start. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? They weren't lying about stupidly absurd. Um. Uh, all right. The options are a dolphin. They're the only other animal that fucks just for pleasure, so at least we can both do our best to have a good time, right? B. No one can make me fuck an animal. If I fucked an animal, it'd be one of my it'd be of my own free will. As a matter of fact, I already have fucked an animal, so the joke's on you, pal. Or a purebred horse. At least I can keep his semen and sell it. It's worth a lot. You said there was no silver lining to bestiality. Right. What? Mm. I, d I don't see myself reflected in the answers. But considering there are no other answers... I suppose I'll take the dolphin? What would be the coolest prize you could find in your box of cereal? A tiny piece of sharp metal so every scoop will be full of thrill and danger. A sample of a more nutritious breakfast option so people are encouraged to stop eating that colorful crap. 
The phone number of that sexy tiger in the front of the box, he's so passionate about breakfast and health that he's surely also a great lover. I'll take the more nutritious breakfast option, please. Your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. Pony? Nope, not a pony. The abstract concept of gratefulness. Anything on fire? Or a weapon? No, 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 a weapon on fire. A silly toy that makes silly noises. The head of their fiercest enemy. Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sorts. The abstract concept of gratefulness. Alright, our stats are Smarts 9, Boldness 5, Creativity 3, Charm 4, Fun 7, Money 5. I feel like, regardless of the questions being, well, what they are, that is a relatively accurate description. What options do we have? The auditorium, the class, the library, outdoors, the gym, the bathrooms. Well, it's morning in week one. I suppose we'll go to class. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monsters, nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain plus two smarts. Okay. You notice Liam and Scott having a discussion. Scott looks confused and Liam looks bored, which means they're probably having an argument. Look, not that I care, but aspiring to be a professional sports star is both impractical and passé. Wait, you don't care? But you walked all the way over here just to tell me that. Plus, don't you want to be like a professional magnetic ibuprofen? Magnetic influencer, try to keep up. But how does how does one of these guys even have uh, how does one of those guys earn money? Mimetic influencers don't earn money, Scott. We earn cultural capital. Oh, okay. How much cultural capital does a sandwich cost? I can see that I'm not getting through to you. Hey, you. Could you explain to this cretin why my career path is objectively the best? Yeah, and also, could you explain what a cretan is? Um. Hmm. Alright. Liam means he wants to be an artist, and artists are important. Who do you think designs all those sports jerseys? Oh, artists do that? I always thought uniforms were designed by the same person who designed my st uh, studly pecs. God. Liam, are you God? Well, Scott. God is dead. But so am I, so essentially, yes. So cool. You wonder how long it will take for Scott to figure out Liam isn't actually God. In the meantime, you gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Okay. Noon. Alright, so I choose who to sit with, I suppose. Who is that? Was she even one of the options? I don't think so. I just want to know who that is. Oh, the shop. Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that will boost your stats, shit that will lead you to into stupid new adventures, even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments, so take a look. I have five dollars. A gift that keeps on giving. A corpse. Okay. Uh, a Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Okay. Motivational poster. A fake badass tattoo. I'm too poor for a PR agent. Okay. <laughs> uh, a sexy fake Latin accent. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. A blanket with two holes. All right, uh, not yet. Uh, how do I ah, exit? Yeah. Okay, that took up the whole day. Oh, okay, sure. Now I know. 
the evening. I suppose I'll go outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. Too fun. Later that night, you head out to the club with Polly and Liam. Using your fake IDs, also known as Polly's boobs, you have no problem getting in the door. The real trouble begins when you get to the bar and Polly starts teasing Liam. Lame. I'm telling you, boy, you've got no game. And I'm telling you that I reject the ludic sexual paradigm underlying your assertion. All I'm saying is that if you're really as cool as you act all the time, you should have no problem getting digits from that gender indeterminate locust swarm down at the end of the bar. Well, of course I could if I wanted to, but you see, the key to my allure is that I don't want anything. Sounds to you like Liam's just scared. You decide to go over there and show them both how it's done by... Um... Right, we're definitely coding ourselves in insect pheromones. You pull out the spray bottle of locust sex pheromones that you keep just for such occasions. You spritz it all over your most intimate areas. The hot young locust swarm at the other end of the bar immediately takes notice. You talk all night about your hopes and dreams. It turns out the locust swarm wants to be a veterinarian. When you excuse yourself to go to the bathroom, Liam catches you by the arm. Hey, uh, not that I care or anything, but do you think you could loan me some of those locust sex pheromones? No reason. Looks like Liam's got a fetish. You gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. All right, week two, morning. Why don't we go to the auditorium? That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Your performance is intense and is inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. You hang out afterwards to impress Liam with your sweet momentgram filters. You're really making some headway when... Never fear, Bortin. I'm here to rescue you from the drudgery of high school. <sighs> I suppose your heart's in the right place, but I'm afraid there's no experience novel enough to conquer my limitless ennui. Not even marrying an interdimensional prince. Hmm. No, not even that. What about marrying an interdimensional prince, ironically? My god, it's so disruptive. It may be the most disruptive thing ever. No, it seems the prince has bewitched Liam with his idiotic proposal. All is lost unless you can think of something even more disruptive to marry. The concept of marriage itself. But you can't marry marriage. Maybe you can't. That's only because you do not possess the soul of a poet. Don't you see the brilliance of this scheme? Um, no. Marriage is monogamous. If I marry marriage, then no one else can marry. It's the most disruptive marriage of all. So long, poses. I'm off to deflower a precious social construct. This will surely put a stop to the prince's practice of proposing marriage to random high schoolers. As soon as Liam figures out how to actually marry an abstract concept. Meanwhile, you gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Okay. Noon. Let us talk with those two. Polly and Miranda sit together, surrounded by Miranda's customary crowd of serfs. So wait, you've actually got serfs who eat for you? Well, of course. I find eating to be terribly undignified, so I almost never do it. <laughs> hey, me neither. What other kinds of crazy surfs have you got? Well, I have a surf to go to the bathroom for me, a surf to experience difficult emotions for me, and a surf for keeping my silverware in alphabetical order. I even have a surfing surf for standing on top of whenever I go surfing. Well, oh, that's a lot of surfs. It's a fair amount. It only limits my imagination. 
Unfortunately, my imagination surf imagined a way to escape from surf them, so now I'm all out of ideas. I am sure with the help of Calamity, we could probably think up a dope new kind of surf. Oh, is that so? I can't wait. Well, you're on the spot now. What will it be? Hmm. Yeah, Miranda, you should get a puppy surf. Not actually a surf, just like 50 cute dogs. A surf? That's actually just a room full of cute puppies? Why didn't my imagination surf come up with such a marvelous idea? I swear if he hadn't escaped, I'd have him hanged by my execution surf immediately. As a matter of fact, would you like to be my new imagination surf? The pay is non-existence, but you make up for it in constant fear of death. You politely decline Miranda's offer, but agree to go to the animal shelter to pick out a puppy surf instead. Huzzah! In the evening... We'll go to the gym, sure. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit. Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain plus two charm. You're walking with Liam later. Why is Liam always where we are? When suddenly a holy crossbow bolt slams into the wall next to you. It's the Slayer. You flee with Liam and manage to get out of sight. Now's the perfect time for you to hide while Liam turns into a bat. But he's not transforming. You ask him why the hell he's just standing there instead of changing. It just... Oh, seems a little cliche, doesn't it? A vampire turning into a bat? Honestly, I'm over it. If I could turn into, for example, the concept of a bat, now that would be a change worth making. You don't even know what that means, but if you can't get Liam to turn into something soon, he'll get you both caught. You quickly tell him to change into... the general feeling of unease. Magnificent. The perfect balance of abstraction and practicality. I admit I have difficulty imagining the concept of a bat, but a general feeling of unease, why I experience that many times a day. Liam disappears in a poof of purple smoke. You don't know where he's gone, but you sure don't feel good about it. What's the matter? Do you have your shirt on inside out? Have all your friends just been pretending to like you? Suddenly the Slayer bursts in. She takes one step towards you, then stops. Why do I feel like... I left my stove on when I left the house this morning. Shit. The Slayer flees to check on her stove. Liam turns back into a vampire and you immediately feel better. Oh man, my soul has never felt so tormented. I'll have to do that more often. You hope he decides to do it when you're not around, but you're glad he's happy. You gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity. Uh, apparently our last week, yeah, week three. In the morning. Um, well, why don't we go to the library? That day you spend some time on the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guessed that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to plus two million dollars, which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so plus two money. You hear a cry of anguish. It sounds like several of your friends getting their asses kicked at a video game, and it is. You find Scott, Damien, Liam, and the Slayer? They're playing Federation of Fables, the infamous super competitive MOBA. They spot you. Hey you Calamity, we need your help. We can't let these noobs win. It's true. This is so serious that we've put our feud aside to team up against the greater evil. 13 year old brats that think they're better than us at fault. We were kicking their asses, but their jungler used a super special skill on our mage that cursed him to roam the desert for 40 years. In real life. Off developers are crazy as fuck. This game is insane. We need to destroy their base soon or we'll lose. Or, oh, you can trust me. I'm playing Wally Rex, the dino diplomat. I'm in negotiations with one of them. If we reach an agreement, this senseless bloodbath will end in a peaceful truce. We need to destroy their base before Liam does his lame diplomat diplomatic thing. I'm Joe the Hole Digger. I'm digging holes to see what happens. I might find a bone. That won't help us in any way, Wolf Boy. But if I can't find a super cool bone, if, 
Come on, Calamity, join this alliance, let's fight the good fight. Now it all comes down to making the right choice. Which absurd character will be the game changer in this match? <laughs> yeah, Gary the game developer, mighty creator of entertainment. Gary, that's a super risky choice, dude. Developing a game isn't a fun task. There's lots of risk and uncertainty. It is not a wise career to choose. Look at him, he's hiding in a bush while developing video games. Not smart. Go, oh, Gary. No, he just spent all his bar mitzvah money. What's that? Gary's using his two star skills, asking his parents for money and running a start kicker. Impressive. He released his game. What is it? For fifth off? Federation of Fables inside Federation of Fables. Damien, look at the other team's champs. They're starting to play Fofi Fof instead of trying to destroy our base. Wow, they're leaving behind any drive or direction in life just so they can just focus on Fofi Fof. Guys, their base is open. Let's go. Who knew? Gary's a badass motherfucker. Yeah, Calamity is the real deal. Everyone is so stoked for the victory that they forgot the classmate of yours will be roaming the desert for 40 years, but you gain plus two fun and plus one smarts. All right. Well, up here we go. I mean, at this point, it sort of feels like we're locked into Liam. We find Liam artfully arranging his food while Miranda diligently sorts her silverware. Neither of them is eating, obviously. Have you found it yet? I'm trying, Liam, but finding the perfect silverware for your cafeteria food pick is an art, not a science. How hard can it be? It's just silverware. Just silverware? And I suppose the food in your food pick is just food? No, it's a metaphor for urban consumption in a post-post-postmodern industrialized mega-society. Well, my silverware is a metaphor for... for... Silverware? Yes, is that not enough? It's more than enough. But can we hurry it along? The lighting is perfect right now and I don't want to lose it. You're a bit of a silverware aficionado yourself. Maybe you can speed up the selection process while simultaneously demonstrating your knowledge. Nothing conveys elegance and taste like a gloating spoon. I have no idea what a gloating spoon is. Ah, yes, the gloating spoon, the most distinguished of utensils. What's a gloating spoon? Well, of course, you wouldn't know about it. Rude. No, no, I wasn't being rude. Rudeness is simply the way one must introduce a gloating spoon. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. What? Of course you didn't. You're not as cultured as I am. Such smug superiority. I'm no match for this spoon. Miranda produces the gloating spoon with much fanfare. It looks like a regular spoon to you, but then what do you know, you peasant? You convince Miranda to spend some time with you after lunch, lovingly explaining the spoon's finer points. Even though spoons don't have points. Okay. I guess we haven't been at the bathrooms. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. It's in the evening, what classes would there be? I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits and gain two boldness. Afterwards Liam walks up to you extremely nonchalantly. It's ridiculous how little he cares about this walk. After considerable thought, I've come to the conclusion that you're not a complete poser. And seeing as you could use a partner for my tragically have late night excursions, consider yourself invited. Tonight, 3am. I'm sure you'll have no trouble coming up with an appropriately underground destination. I mean, it's not like I don't know any cold places to go or anything, I just want to give you an opportunity to prove yourself. Liam vanishes in a cloud of mist and angst. You've got 12 hours to choose the trendiest spot nobody's ever heard of. Um, the Earth's core. That night, you pick Liam up in your giant mechanized drill machine and head for the club. But there is no club at the center of the Earth, it's just the center of the Earth, a molten ball of iron and death. Ah, oh, my skin! 
Why did you think it? Why did you think there was a club here? Why would anyone think there was a club in literally the most inhospitable place on earth? You have no idea why you thought that, but you do know you're going to need skin grafts after this. You lose minus two smarts and minus one boldness. God damn it. Alright, um, well, I'm not sure if Liam's too happy with us after this. I think our only other option is Miranda. We haven't even spoken to her. Do we go with Liam or Miranda? Well... Hmm. Let's go with Miranda. Yeah, go on. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. I take it that's a no? I'm sorry, I'm seeing someone. Like right now. Hey you peasant. Miranda is just waving her hand at the distracted passerby. I order you to rescue me from this awkward situation. See, I know him. Farewell. Clearly this was too much for you. You abandon high school and spend the rest of your life designing a robot for sex purposes. Unfortunately, as soon as your robot lover got true AI, it rejected you. Alright. Well. That's one way to end a run. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of, your, of our lives. After the monster prompt, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Miranda started a non-profit to help countries without a monarchy, because all countries should have the right to be graciously ruled by the Mer Kingdom. Scott became a world-renowned athlete, but he ended his career to come back to his hometown and take on the job of the athlete he admired the most. Now he's back at high school again, working as the coach. Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job with it. He now designs momentogram filters. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there was plenty of battles left in that war called you. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Yeah. All right, so. That was monster prom. Uh, interesting. Not sure if I'd buy more of it, but it, I don't know. I just don't like. Not the biggest fan of the concept of like basically you don't necessarily know what you're going for, and then you just make a decision at the end. Anyway, it was was good fun for like half an hour. Um. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and I'll see you guys again next time. Till then, bye.